Welcome back everyone, let's do another VMAP tutorial and here we're gonna practice uh, some examples about a rigid body element okay and where is it uh, right here this is the one okay we're gonna have uh, three uh, rods that are deformable and then we're gonna have this blue rod which is a rigid body which means that doesn't matter what kind of force we apply to it, it will not change its shape, it's not gonna bend, stretch or anything like that. They have their uses and they are quite useful, so we're gonna practice in this example how we can set them up and uh, put them to use. Alright, let's get started. First I'm gonna go to model and set up a few nodes. So the first one, let's say it's gonna be a 0, 0, 0. The other one is gonna be at two zero zero. The other one two two one zero uh, zero one zero. The other one two two zero. And the last one is four two zero. Okay, here you go. Cancel that out. Uh, Let's click this button right here. We have all the identities, or you could go to Control Q, Labels, and adjust it from the visibility uh, menu. So these are our nodes: one, two, three, four, five, and six. Next, the material properties. My aluminum, or something, whatever. Uh, e. 9.33 uh, good okay cancel now the property model property uh, material my aluminum rod okay uh, yeah rod yeah okay and area 1 e negative 4 uh, what is this? My rod. And OK. Cancel it out. Now we're going to go ahead and create model, create the element. The element, I'm going to use my rod. Uh, it's going to go from node 1 to node 2. OK. Then another one again with my rod. It's going to go from 4 and three okay and one more using my rod again from five to six there you go five two six fills it in by automatically okay cancel so these three and then we're gonna have to set up a rigid body between two three and five so let's set up the model the element and here at the type make sure you pick this one rigid okay there you have it, it's gonna open this window and here we're gonna have to tell him what kind of rigid body elements we want to use. There's three different types, RB1, RB2 and RB3 interpolation type. We're gonna use the RB2 here and on this side we're gonna set up all the master nodes and here we're gonna set up all the slave nodes. So these will always follow these guys, okay? And here we're gonna decide what kind of restrictions we can put on them. For us, the master or independent node will be down here, the number two. And here, all the dependent or slave nodes, we can click on them. It's gonna be the three and the five. Okay, and we're gonna let's take a look uh, this will be our master and these are the two uh, slave or dependent i guess uh, it's better if we use independent and dependent but more old-fashioned uh, understanding is slave and master so use whichever you want i understand why would some people be bothered by it so this is our independent these are our dependent okay so here we gonna allow translation in this direction but we're gonna constrain all the other 
uh, motions and therefore this and this will follow exactly the same as this one does okay so whatever this does these two will follow so and we're gonna apply a load right here so let's make sure that that's what we have and uh, let's see so here what do we see here here it uh, kind of switches thinking on you so remember when we go set up constraints and loads and you need to uh, like uh, check the ones that you want to zero out well the thinking here is that you need to leave the ones that you want copied checked so uh, my node 3 and 5 which are dependent I want them to copy the translation in the X and pretty much that's the only thing right but uh, that, that, that's the only thing I want them to do to whatever this node does in the X direction I want these two to follow it and do exactly the same okay so that's the thinking here okay cancel one other thing that we can do is uh, let's go back here to model elements and by type click on the rigid edit go back to the same window and here see this little uh, rectangle we can change the color of the element that we just did and OK and press Control G to regenerate and there you go now you can tell them apart by color right we know that these are regular deformable bodies and this one is a rigid body it reminds you visually so next uh, let's uh, set up our constraints on the nodes if we remember we need pin pin and pin right here and here we need a roller and this red block it just wants to tell us to uh, constraint all the, the rotations you know so we don't have uncontrolled rotation so the oh, let's see BC boundary conditions okay pin pin and pin okay I'm gonna call these uh, I guess the name of the nodes 146 these are pinned okay then at this location at 2 we we have uh, everything blocked except the translation in the X right we want to allow translation there uh, call it number 2 okay and that's all our constraints now the load on the node uh, F external okay node 3 okay I'm gonna call it F it's a force uh, 10,000 that's what we said and okay cancel and there you go I believe we are ready to run our analysis new one it's a static analysis okay and go ahead and analyze and if we didn't do any mess ups then we should have an all clear complete message right here and telling us that we successfully completed and let's see the deform yep there you go we can see see how it moves if this would be a deformable body then we would see some kind of a bend between two three and five nodes right but since it's rigid it does not change whatever this node does this and this mirrors it there you go we can also go let's see select deform contour deform and yeah rod axial force yeah that's good okay there you go we can visualize a little extra entertainment for ourselves nice all right well that should do it for this video thank you guys for watching make sure you like and subscribe and tune in for the next one